Hey, 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 it's your girl Mel with Shop Talk. I got some Shop Talk crew in the building. Today's topic was the golden child. Many are called, few are chosen. And why are we so interested in the many and not the chosen ones? So if you want to catch today's show, you could go to Blog Talk Radio backslash shop wait blog talk radio.com backslash shop talk with mail or always visit our website at shop talk with mail.com we love to see you and hear from you you can comment below so today's topic like i said um it was um many are called fewer chosen why are we so interested in the many and not the chosen one so we talked about the pastor down in atlanta the one to charge the cover charge of ten dollars to get in for Easter Sunday. What's your thoughts on that? that was, his name was Reverend Bless. I ain't making it up either. <laughs> Reverend Bless at church. Feel good ministry. Feel good ministry. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> and if they didn't pay, one of the members, um, the, the news ended up talking to one of the members at the church. And um, she said that he got upset with her. <laughs> he got upset with her. And she wouldn't pay the ten dollars, and she threw he threw an Easter egg at her. Wow. <laughs> was it the kind that opened up or a real egg? I don't even <laughs> know because I am not in the ATL because that's where that is happening. At look, a legend, but I guess it's really not a legend because they said they spoke with him and he actually admitted to doing it. He said um, him throwing the Easter eggs, he was misunderstood. Now, no. Um, that's clear. Down, that's very clear. <laughs> very clear. You hit me with this egg because I wouldn't pay ten dollars that cover charge. So, what's your thoughts on that? What you think? Okay. Go ahead. Either. I, I just think. Uh, well, it was it? I don't know. There's so many questions, but just to charge for people to come into the into church, I think it's kind of odd. You know, just this is an odd thing. Very odd. I never yeah. heard it before. You never, never. But like, I'm gonna eat my dough. Right. Well, he said that he got to pay for it. He got to get some of his money back because he rents the church. Oh, so what he was probably saying is y'all ain't y'all ain't pay, y'all ain't donating like <laughs> yeah, y'all supposed to. All this go in my pocket to keep this going on. <laughs> pay me, pay me. It's Sunday morning. All right. Oh, okay. Wow. Hey, yeah, he may still be wrong. He may still be wrong. <laughs> yeah, wrong. I think I think there's other ways to generate to to generalize your your uh, to energize. I'm sorry, your base. And if you want to gener- if you want to bring about some energy for them to start getting involved, he could have said, "Hey, y'all need to do this," but this is why. Well, he energized know. them by hitting them with Easter yeah, eggs. Yeah. Well. <laughs> he could have had <laughs> me easily by saying it comes with a buffet. Simple crazy, fact. crazy. You get ten dollars, you get your. But I say two drink minimum, you get your buffet. Hey, and then the building find the rent or whatever is paid. I would have been down for it with an incentive. Not just to come in and praise God. Oh! <laughs> wow. I love it. Look, I I love. It. thanks for your support. <laughs> <laughs> you said not to just come in and praise God. You ain't paying $10. No. But you wouldn't pay $10 to praise God. We going to keep her in I'm, prayer. I <laughs> do. I would be at the crib praising them for free. That is. <laughs> What's your thought? You said a two drink minimum. <laughs> A two drink minimum and a buffet, and a buffet, buffet. an Easter buffet. That would probably have been a good buffet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now that you know what, but guess what? That's pretty creative. That's a good idea. Let me tell you about not to praise God the ten dollars, but come in and you could pay ten dollars if you would like to take part in our Easter Mm -hmm. dinner immediately following services. Exactly. Yeah, well, we had, we had activities like that. Do we, you? I'm we, had, we have one. Okay. Uh, I'm coming. No, we, we coming. You know, then we had a you know a fundraiser too uh, for someone. They, they I forgot it, some tragedy happened, but it was like some kind of spaghetti dinner thing. I mean, you can have those things and in, in, in incorporate into your church. I mean, do some fun things. Just do the God thing. Do the God thing. Yeah. Do the right thing. That was Spike Lee saying. Do the God thing. That's what God thing. Make a buffet. Yeah. Are you off the hook? We uh we touch bases on. And, um, the shooting down in North Carolina. Um, what's your thoughts on that? How, how do you feel about that? And I'll tell you, I'll ask you a question and that way it won't be just general. Go ahead. From what I heard about it, it seems like they said the young man ran because he had this other pending child support issue that was going to cause him to go to jail. I think the thing is, is that um, whenever we have laws or infractions that cause people to feel that threatened that they're going to run mm-hmm. from this armed officer who's going to shoot, obviously in this case, shoot first and ask questions mm-hmm. later. You know, um, 
th there has to be more done in the preventative steps of, of these other penalties that are causing people to, to have these these things that they're that they're uh, running from or escaping. Now, I'm not taking the blame off of the police officer for what he did because it's definitely there. But the the situation with the man was. It was a child support issue from what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. They got escalated. They're believing. They don't know because he's no longer here to tell us about okay, it. Okay, they're believing. They're uh -huh. believing and speculating. And if it, based off of that speculation, who's going to pay child support now? Mm -hmm. Who's going to raise those children now? Mm -hmm. Who's going to be the male role model in those children's lives now that he's dead? Now, that's a good point. You I'm know, thinking that the police department of South Carolina is going to be paying the child support since they charge him with yeah. murder. And they clearly have it on video. So there was a, a a bystander that was there that had it on video. And like I said, you know, first gunshot, you, we hear gunshot, we gone. Yeah. That but he actually watched it. Um, the officer, uh, to my knowledge and what I saw, um, called as soon as he got out to run and said he needed backup and he stole his taser, which was untrue. And the video actually shows him dropping the taser over by the... Um, the victim. Mm -hmm. So they found that that was untrue and then the dash cam actually verified that there was no editing to the original uh, mm -hmm. video that was taken on the guy's cell phone. So my thoughts are, do you think that the outcome would have been the same if that young man would not have turned in the video? Absolutely not. With mm -hmm. the track record, absolutely not. It would have been just another Mike Brown or uh, Trayvon Martin case where they're just getting off yeah. because the law, in my opinion, is more powerful than the people. So, and that is something that you would say that. Go ahead. I, I just kind of think, like, taking in consideration all of those things that have happened, like, people can say, okay, these things are still happening, but President Obama did uh, launch that initiative that encourages not just the, the uh, car uh, cams or whatever they call them, but to, for the officers to wear like cameras on them, mm -hmm. on the badge, I mean? the oh, badge. Uh -huh. Well, they would have a, a a mobile camera on their on their person. Okay. So so this that initiative is taking place. Unfortunately, there's there's innocent dead men that have caused this to happen. You know what I mean? But um, the the I think I, I'm and I'm hoping that if that wherever that took place, that there would have been an investigation, that they would have looked at the, the information and been, and been objective about it, uh -huh. and it came to the same conclusion outside of the eyewitness. I'm hoping that would have happened, and we need that to happen more more than we need someone to, ha to, to be there by happenstance and then pull out their camera. Because I'll tell you like this, I have to get more familiar with pulling out my camera because... I forget to even pull it out to take pictures. If I'm, if right. I'm taking something happy, <laughs> right. you know, so to be in the moment is something to say. I'm so busy, like looking, like, oh my god, I can't, you can't believe this happened. I wouldn't even have the ability to say, let me pull out my camera and record it. Because you, know you still mean? be a shock. Still a shock. So I mean, luckily there's people who, who who are able to react in that situation with that. But hopefully we can start to have law enforcement police themselves. Use the use the things that that they like those dashboard cameras, the the physical person cameras, to and and have and have objective leadership. I'm sorry, have leadership objectively look at those things and come to these conclusions without citizens necessarily having to be, having to be there. Because hey, I've got pulled over and been like, hey, I'm on this dark road. I don't see a house, mm -hmm. let alone another car. You so know what instant I mean? nervousness. Yeah, definitely. That's always for me. Is it for you being a female? Oh, being a female, yes. Just because being a black female, I know it's worse for a black man, but I get, I don't know why, I, I, I stay out of trouble. But as soon as I'm pulled over, I'm like, what's going to happen next? My kids are in the car. What's going to happen next? And you don't ever feel. From all. Right. You don't feel protected as you should. From all the videos right, and everything that's, that's coming out. Right. Life makes you scared because it's real. It's like in front of your face. And then when you're put in that predicament, you're like, what's next? You know, and I worry about my kids and just sending them out there in this world. And it, it's scary that they're supposed to protect and serve, but you don't feel that way at all. Yeah. Wow. Because I mean, I, I've been on like both ends. And I remember once a long time ago going to the Stratus, right? Uh -huh. Went to the Stratus and somehow. That was a teen nightclub. <laughs> a teen <laughs> nightclub. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was me and three of my friends, and somehow our ride didn't show up, right? And so we're just this out. is afterwards. Yeah, and we're okay. this is afterwards, and this is afterwards in the uh, 
in a suburb that, uh -huh. at that time really wasn't accustomed to having us out there. Right. You know what I mean? Us being uh, African American young males, you know, we were all like about maybe between the ages of like 14 and 15. Well, so anyway, we were stuck, but the officers gave us a ride to the Youngstown border. You know, and then and the oh. border was like close to where we live, so we could uh -huh. walk from there. But the thing was, it was like they had it. They had it. They could have said easily, "Well, you guys are out here after after night. We're taking you down to JJC," and really could have threw a monkey wrench in in our lives at uh -huh. that time. You know, but they, they these were. It just happened that we got, you know, grace with these men who had like hearts to understand the situation, and they did what they could do for us. And that was you know, the awesome town police department. Awesome. Shout out to them! Yeah, that, that was, but that was that one time. Now, that was, that, that, time, that was yeah. with those two officers. Now, mm -hmm. other stuff could have happened that you know I don't you know, know about. Yeah. But this, that was just one of my experiences. Then I got another experience where I got pulled over not too long ago, and um, they told me that my license plate light was out. And I'm thinking like, well, there is no way you could have had a problem with seeing it because of all these lights is blind. <laughs> You're like, you can't see anything. You know, it's like you got floodlights and all these things that shot it on you like, oh, man. You know, I'm just like, you know, and, and I'm on the free. I'm on well, the Clearly, you saw my lights. Yeah, clearly, man. you see it. And he said, do you know why I pulled you over? And I said, you know, honestly, I thought you were you were you were putting on your lights to go to another, to an to to actual else? emergency. Uh -huh. Because I didn't feel like I would did any, I, I didn't know why you pulled You didn't know you was an no, emergency. You know, I thought I'm a good citizen. Let me <laughs> just pull my car over to the side, <laughs> slowing down. I'm like, he's still behind me. He wants to go around. You know, is this for me? <laughs> oh, this for me? That was hilarious. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, and that, even in that situation, I was stopped for a little bit. But I guess the thing is, is that you got to, don't give anybody a reason to have to pull you over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then for me, like I didn't know my lights were out. How would you know? You're know. driving. And then guess what? It was, a, it, was, it, was a, it was a it was a the light on the license plate, the license plate light. So you don't get an alert on your car mm -hmm. that's out. You know, like if you blinker out, you blinker like dee, 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 right. Up. You know, but I didn't know. I, I guess like, and it's funny because in driver's ed, I remember them saying, inspect the vehicle before uh -huh. you go. Yeah, they do say that. <laughs> you know, they do say that. You know, we forget. Before you get that. in. Yeah, before you get in, inspect the vehicle. But what if you get in during the day? You don't need your lights. Because um, uh -huh. Mr. Scott was um, pulled over for a tail light. Okay. And see, I've been pulled over for tail lights. But guess what? I think it's a little different because I'm a female, too. Uh -huh. And I remember the officer... He pulled me over one. Listen, one time I was pulled over three times on once the same thing, and it was a the tail light. Well, I didn't know that my light was out. Why didn't I know my light was out? Because I'm in the car. I was. He said, "Well, do you know that your tail light is out?" I was like, "What?" Mm -hmm. That was the first officer. I said, "No," and he said, "Oh, okay." He said, "Well, it's your back." And he told me my back driver's side tail light was out. He said, "I said, well, I'm getting ready to go home anyway." He said, "All right." I'm on my way, so now I turn right because I'm on Midlothian turning right on South Avenue. So as I go to South Avenue to go home, I get pulled over again. This was only probably like not even two minutes. Who pulled you over? Another again? officer. Oh, same police force though? Same police force. I said, listen, he just told me right by McDonald's that it was out. I'm getting ready to go home. And then he said, oh, he said, well, this is your lucky day because I was getting ready. And then I looked and of course I was upset because I feel like I don't know that it is out because I am in the car. Uh -huh. Clearly, I said he just told me. So he didn't believe me. He was a real prick. He calls and I can hear it over the radio. He's like, oh, yeah, I just pulled her over. Mm. That's what he said. So then now I said, well, let me hurry up and go home. I have never been so happy to get to Youngstown. <laughs> but right before I get to Youngstown, another one pulled me over wow. to tell me three times. I said, this is a record. This has to be a record. It got to be. Three mm -hmm. times. For the same thing. I said, I just got pulled over down there. And he said, I heard over the radio. Was that you? I said, that's me. He was like, wow. I said, let me just get down this side of South Avenue and I know I'll be good to go. You should have went to AutoZone and oh, parked. Right. Well, well, listen, guess what the one guy said? The first police officer told me, which was interesting. I said, well, is there a place? He said, well, there's an AutoZone there. He said, but ma'am, don't even go there. He, he told me. All these are white officers. The first one, he told me, he said, no, I don't think it's a safe place for you to go. He was like, don't, don't go there. He said, just handle it tomorrow. So I was okay. And then when I got that third one, I'm driving down. I'm like, let me get to Youngstown. And it's sad to say, I ain't saying that y'all bad cops in Youngstown and y'all don't do nothing. 
But, <laughs> but I was like, oh, let me hurry up. And I'm driving down. I was so happy to see Youngstown just driving on by. I rolled past about three cops in no Youngstown. Problem. No problem. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's funny. I've seen cars in Ohio that have been pieced together with duct tape. And you got pulled over for a tail light in your car? I've seen cars like what, a Tesla, and I got a newer car. Too. But you know, it was it was funny. Uh, NPR did a story on that about how, like in New York, it was this officer who blew the whistle on it, saying that they were making them do quotas, and he was like, by doing these quotas, it was like, what was it? Like twenty tickets, one arrest. So he's like, you got to get the twenty one. You know what I mean? What? Yeah, it was a big. It was a story on there talking about that. But the thing was, was like. He was like, hey, that doesn't make me an effective police officer just ticketing people to be ticketing people or whatever, you know, because I mean, like, let's say, for example, maybe the people in and I don't know, I uh -huh. do not know, but uh -huh. I'm just saying, let's if hypothetically, let's say that police officer is like, hey, I patrol an impoverished community. Mm -hmm. Is it am I going to am I am I going to pull over this person with the intent of ticketing them or the intent of letting them know that you have to improve, you have to, you have to get this fixed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I get, I think there's different approaches to it. Um, and I think like once we, I think now with all this violence, there's, there has to be a stronger connection made with what they call, I think it's the phrase is community policing. Like back in the day, they used to walk a beat and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And they knew the people. Right. You know, and I think like knowing, knowing your citizens, helps you enforce the law, but I mean, and it helps you protect the people, you know what I mean? Not like to protect the people in, in, a, uh, in an ideology, but like, hey, I know her. I know this is out of character. Something may be wrong. Let me see if everything is okay. Right. Or I know them. They don't usually have on their lights this time of night. Maybe something's wrong. I'll keep an eye on the house and see if I see any strange behavior. Right. You know, I mean, like that kind of thing, like true, like- That does even come back. And I, I, th I think it has no choice to. But with that being said, minorities have to take the have to take this have to get involved in those uh, municipal jobs like police, fire, all those safety jobs. They don't seem to have a big benefit in the beginning because you can say, oh, this ain't gonna be a lot of money for this. But retirement is decent and you're good. In most cases, I, I've never seen a a retired police officer in a bad situation you know I mean, me either and you brought yeah. up a good point there is the issue you have the um was it the civil service test yeah uh -huh. and um i remember i was listening to a show that my mom had did and there was a guy on there talking about it he said yeah they, there's some um we do want um african-american i say black you know uh, police officers but they're not taking the test but here's the problem or i won't even say they're not passing the test they can can't get past the uh, drug testing. Well, you and know what? that's what the guy said on it. And I looked and but I was that, like, whoa, that, that, that's sad. Yeah, it hurts but, my heart. But that's sort of a twist, though, because I've taken many of the social uh, service, service, uh, service, uh, the civil service, service test, test mm -hmm. and you're not being drug tested when you take the test. So, so they pass that and then they can't get past it. Yeah, I think that, I mean, you're, okay. not, you're not, you know what I'm saying? You're not, so maybe I said it wrong. Maybe you're passing but, that but, and not I mean, get past Maybe they told you that, but I, I'm just saying like, but I can't see somebody saying, hey, I'm going to take the civil service test for this po for this position as a, whatever mm -hmm. and then have a dirty yarn right. like after you go through all of that because it's not like... Is it's it 30 days because you know marijuana is in your system well, for 30 well, days? I, I guess the thing I'm saying is like most, like for example, when you take the test, if it's still the same, when I've taken them, you've gotten certain points for certain things. Like if you had a degree, if you were a military and that sort of thing. Oh, so, okay. like, so like you could be in a situation where, let's say you only missed two on a test, but you had none of that other experience. Well, you might you might have a 98 and someone who got like a uh, 85 could have been a, a police officer. I mean, could have been in the military, 10 points. Uh -huh. Could have had a bachelor's degree, maybe another 10 points. Uh -huh. So they end up having like 105 points. You know, but you actually score better, but they got more more points because of what they've done. Oh, they the VIP. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I mean, there's a <laughs> VIP. I, I mean, and, and, and should those people be given consideration? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, Ooh. definitely. But I'm, I'm just saying, like, there's a couple barriers to it. But I think the thing is, is understanding a career path. Like, do we understand that these are great jobs? Do we? Do we? I don't know the way that it's going because according to the NAACP from 2012, there has been 96 cases where officers have killed, let me specify, Caucasian officers mm -hmm. have killed unarmed black 
mm -hmm. people. And I don't even say because it was a woman was a involved woman. Yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah. And uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I feel like I'm consuming. No, it. you're okay. Go with it. Go with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, but I, you know, also with that, I think it would have been good to see, first of all, with with the professional development over those time periods that police that the departments have implemented, maybe like the cultural diversity pieces, you know, competency. Uh, with with using your firearm and how to engage people like have have the have, they would have looked at those things along with that along with with the hiring practices with the recruitment practices you know like what are they doing to change like literally change the face of that of of of, of that uh, law enforcement because I was I had a job previously where I had to go out and I promoted healthcare occupations uh -huh. so I mean I didn't just say well who looks like the typical nurse no I talked to men I talked to minorities I talked to whoever was interested do I look like, like the typical nurse the no, truth no you don't like the, you know, but, the, but the point I'm saying yeah, no, I'm just, I can't. but the point I'm saying is is that like I went into that into that mode thinking who wants this position Mm -hmm. You know, and who doesn't know how to get it? Who doesn't know the career path associated with it? Because you'll have people to say, hey, I got to get a degree. I got to get a bachelor's degree in criminal justice to be a police officer. Do you? Really? No. See? You got to go to the police academy. So you know it's all I mean? about education. I mean, yeah, it may help you. I mean, even with the state troopers, I think you need 60 credit hours, you know, but I don't necessarily, I don't know if it specifies what it has to be in. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that, like, we need to understand how you get into these jobs. You know, I mean, people can say, hey, go out there and do it. And it's like, great. You'd be like, well, how do I do it? You know uh, what I mean? Can we call our council person? <laughs> <laughs> how yeah. do I get in this thing? Uh, You're the councilman. Yeah, you the councilman. <laughs> can you tell me who I need to talk to, councilman? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know if they can tell you that. Uh, uh, I'm yeah. joking. But <laughs> Only because of the elections is coming up May 5th, 2015. Yeah. Make mm -hmm. sure you vote. Make sure you get the right person in there and do your doggone thing. Good. You want to finish up because we've been ready to Wrap this no, up. No, no, no. Understand the jobs and let's go after them. Understand yeah. education is needed to get those jobs. Let's mm -hmm. go after it. Okay. Stay, stay informed. Stay informed. You can ask Google anything. So ask Google. <laughs> and look, ask Google. Hilarious. Hey, this is Shop Talk. I'm your girl Mel. It's been real. Again, you can listen to today's show on blogtalkradio.com backslash shop talk with mail. Visit our website at shoptalkwithmail.com. Also, you can email me at shoptalkwithmail at yahoo.com. You can go to Twitter at Shop Talk with Mail. You can go to Facebook, Shop Talk with Mail. <laughs> Do it. Just Shop Talk, baby. That's all.